Hello to everybody. <laughs> Finance committee meeting. What a mess. Blocking information, preventing us from being able to share information with the uh, public. Let's take a look. Okay, so we got these two guys, right? Rita Spinelli, Finance Committee member, and Nathan are in this meeting. They're coming for your taxes. The hometown tax team wants to raise your taxes. Why? I'll show you why, right? My opinion, of course. However, they don't do their job. They have a responsibility that they're supposed to be the ones preparing the budget with the rest of us board, and they're not doing it. Not only are they not doing their job, they're neglecting the duty to prepare the budget, right? They're blocking information from other board members. Let me show you. So I received this email from our auditor. If you read it, it says, and speaking with Ms. Danicola about some revisions to the draft audit about an hour ago, I was instructed that I should not respond to or provide information to any one board member. She told me that all vendors of third party providers, service providers have been told the same thing by the board. This is a board order, this is a board policy. This is, this is government action. Thou shall not, right? Mr. Stern then called me, our auditor, and confirmed what Mr. Danicola told. Right now, this guy was going to send us the draft audits. We can review. We're in budget season. We got to look at all this stuff, right? We still haven't seen a copy. So here, Larry and Ms. Danicola apparently are saying that us board members individually can't investigate and look for things. That no matter how many case laws we say that we can. However, benefit of the doubt, right? Don't trust the guy, but let's just ask anyway. So I asked for a right to know request. Thought you'd like that. I asked for any records and all records instructing third party service providers to not respond to or provide information to any board member. <laughs> so if it exists within this government, this lady, Melanie Windhorn, the right to know officer, has a responsibility to search and find it. She's got to certify that it doesn't exist, right? I'm going to appeal it and say, hey, I want you to really look hard because I got an email saying Ms. Danicola and Larry feel it exists or at least told this guy that it exists. And he alleged what they said, right? So let's find out for that. So we'll check. But here it says it's granted. However, there aren't any. Now I looked too. I couldn't find anything in the policy manual. But... All right. So now you know that they're blocking information. Why? They're coming for your wallets. They're looking for a tax increase. All right, so I did a spreadsheet. Let me pull this up. The spreadsheet is pretty straightforward, right? It goes over each of the year's budgets, right? Here's our, here's our actual end of the year numbers given to the Pennsylvania Department of Education. I'll show you what that looks like. So the Department of Education, there's Lee Heighton, here's 2,600, right? Is it no numbers? 2013, 2014, right? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So you can pull all these numbers right off the district, um, uh, I'm sorry, PDE's website, right? So I compiled them for you, make it easy. I pretended that I would be a business manager and wanted to inform my board that's responsible to prepare this document so they can review it and look at it. So I did it for them. Here you go. So they're going to tell you that it's mistakes and it's bad. And you can check it yourself. It should be close, if not perfectly accurate, but we'll find out. Hopefully a mistake is made and the board will fix it, verifying all the other data is corrected. But here you go. All right. Little tell there on that one. So if you look at this and you realize that the budget keeps increasing and then you also have, I took out the stadium here, right? Because that was an extraneous uh, um, expense in my opinion and definitely an extraordinary expense. So it shouldn't be carried forward. But boy, 
look at this jump, man, 10%. Budget went up 10%, you know? Don't like that. So as we take a look at it, the thing I want to just bring to your attention is right here. It shows a 6% increase, right? And a 4% increase in instruction. That's your teachers. That's your staff members. This is COVID-19. People don't got jobs. People don't got money, right? We're seeing an increase of 4 and 6%. Now you know why they don't want us to see anything, right? Take a look at this in the past. Here these things jumped 8, 7, 9%, right? Now let's take a look at some of the things that they should be keep, keeping on the budget. Why is pupil health down 43%? two jobs in this district. Protect the students, save the community. Right? Board, outside agency, oversight. Yeah, Larry's wife works for the district, and yeah, Wayne's, you know, this, that, and the other. Yeah, I get it, right? A lot of familial relationships within this district, <laughs> okay? That doesn't mean you can't make good decisions. Doesn't mean you shouldn't make good decisions. Yeah, Rocky's wife was Rocky was the president and his wife worked for David Krause. He was president and his wife worked. For, I get it. We have a responsibility though. Right? So when you look at this thing, pupil health, right? And you go through this, you're looking for different ways to cut costs. Here's the stadium, right? What did they buy in 20? 1819 for a million dollars. I'd like to know what this is. We can't get the data. Now, board documents say under our uh, policy, the meeting agenda and all pertinent documents shall be available to the press and public at the meeting, right? Oh, and by the way, host, right? It says no participant may speak more than once in a topic. And that's where you cut everybody off. You missed the other part, sir. You're missing the other part. And the fact that our chairman, our board members are abdicating their authority to get to Cleaver or Denicola that wants to shut everybody up because they don't want to ask too many questions. They miss the second part. Unless all others who wish to speak on the topic, topic have been heard. Somebody might want to add to someone else's comment. They should have the ability to speak. That's why they keep shutting us off. Horrible. By the way, committee meetings are agencies. I, I, I'm repeating this over and over, but the agency, the body and all committees thereof, guys, these are, these are Sunshine Act meetings, okay? You have to follow the law. And when our um, illustrious district says, hey, members with questions requesting a copy or, or uh, of any payment, please contact the business officer. I got tons of questions. They block them, right? Here, I just did another right to know, and it was told no, can't have access. We're in lockdown. We'll be green next week. Hopefully we'll get access. But anyway, I just wanted to hit it real quick, show you that the differences, and I'm gonna pull this up if I can one more time. Right off the proposed budget, 19 million 1196 dollars let that sink in that is a six percent increase from last year and we have an elementary center that supposedly is reducing the amount of staff through attrition and we're supposed to save eight hundred thousand dollars right and apparently in the finance meeting it was announced by our illustrious administration that these people rubber stamp, that some staff members are retiring and will not be replaced. That's great. How many more should be in the same boat 
before they retire. We should really take a look at what these staff members do, which are mandated, which are not mandated prior to doing a tax increase. Before we provide a 6% or a 4% increase in consumption, we should count the number of employees we have full and part-time. See if it's increasing or decreasing. If you look at the number of students that we have, we pretty much have the same number of students over the last 10 years. Why do we have such a significant increase in consumption to educate the same number of students? Thank you. Have a great day.